Hello and welcome back to the Donkey Kong Jungle Climber playthrough with me, the Journey Monkey. And you can tell this part's already kicking off because we've met up with King Karul again, who is slightly annoyed that the cons don't have anything to do but chase him around. Although, to be fair, Karul is trying to take over the world, so it's probably good to chase him around. But anyway, Karul is showing his brains here because apparently he's already set a trap for them. And no how the cons don't really take that much notice. Let's see, let's just stand here. <laughs> there! Yeah, the cons are never the smartest, the, sorry, aren't the brightest bulbs in the box. But one thing I always like here, if you notice this character animation, notice that before the Donkey Kong was um, shocked by the transformation, but now he's just gotten used to it. He's just, which is one of the things I actually love about this game. It's all like, I also loved it in the original Donkey Kong Country games by, by Rareware. They sort of, um, just the little touches here and there in the animation. But anyway, whilst I've been blabbering, a gigantic dragon has suddenly appeared. Now, the idea behind this guy is that you're meant to hit him with the barrel roll attack, and then, as you can see, I think... Uh, sorry, the lighting quality is kind of bad on this video, I apologise for that. But basically, there are several uh, ringed... Well, I can only call them gigantic doorknob rings. D hanging around now, the area, and basically, you have to use the uh, barrel roll attack to... Make his tail hook onto it so you can hit the Kremlin once he pops out of his mouth. Don't think too hard about that last sentence. However, yeah, as you can see here, it's kind of difficult because if you attack at the wrong time, he'll just flop to the ground and you won't be able to do anything to him. But And also, you can only do that when he's just flying around. The rest of the time, he'll occasionally spit fireballs out at you, which you'll have to dodge. Now, will I get... Nope, I don't get it. Past me doesn't get it right then either. Oh, and the rest of the time he also does this whole whack-a-mole thing. And I've lost Diddy. And But, thankfully, that's what the DK barrels are for. But yeah, the fireballs... Yeah, he spits those out as well. Just in order to dodge them, just basically move from side to side and be careful because they do rebound. But... It should be easy to avoid them most of the time. Should be. The reason why I say that is because, well, sometimes this guy is a bastard. He is one of the more harder bosses of this game just because, uh, well, let's just say it's very easy to slip up against him. And now we've got his tail hooked, we can knock him out and take another small bit of his health bar, which as you can see is on the top of the screen. Oh, and yeah, this attack he does after every single time he hits you, which is uh, throwing three volleys of fireballs. Now, you might just say, why don't I just dodge this on the ground? Well, it's because they generate a small flame pillar shockwave at the bottom, which means if you attempt to hit it, well, you get fried, basically. Okay, he's got one more hit to go. Will this be the time when we deliver the final blow? Looks like it. Seeing as I'm, how I'm dodging all of these flames with my um, crystal star. Before falling back to earth. And doing a pathetic job of dodging. <laughs> oh jeez. Past me really sucks at this. Yeah, normally look, to save time in this playthrough I would have edited out all of my um, cheap deaths. But um, the only reason... The only reason I didn't do that is because I didn't really want to explain away where Diddy suddenly disappeared to, along with what happened to the other Crystal Star. So, yeah, I figured it would just be easier to shut over this. Hey, at least you can see how not to do it, right? But, yeah, maybe looking back at it, it's a stupid idea because, well, now you've got to see this guy again. And I'll be honest, this battle and the cutscene after it is pretty much all you see in the next few parts. Well, in this part, anyway. So, oh wait, not really thinking straight today. Anyway. Ah, thank God. Alrighty. Yeah, you also have to get in exactly the right angle, because any other time you bounce off him. But thankfully we eventually did it. 
There is one thing that it does slightly confuse me about this boss. Okay. As you saw in the beginning, he went into a gigantic stone which had a dragon pattern on him. So, does that mean the dragon was already inside it and this is going to save free? But, or did the Kremlin transform into the dragon? I really don't... F I suppose you could say that the Kremlin did transform into the dragon, but to me that really doesn't make that much sense since, well... Yeah, as you can see there, why is the Kremlin this tongue? How did that happen? Uh, what kind of use would that be? Haha, I have my more vulnerable self inside my mouth. All you have to do is get it open and then what would you... Oh, well. I really shouldn't be overthinking this kind of stuff, but... I'm sorry, it's what I do. I... <laughs> It's one of my problems in life. I overthink and overanalyze everything. Hence why a lot of these playthroughs are me complaining about small bits that don't make any logical sense to me. Hey, I'm not, not too bad though. I'm not exactly a Vulcan or anything. For one, I don't have the pointy years. And number two, as you may or may not see, I get also whiny and emotional about some things. But anyway... <laughs> This is not a, um, is it? You are not my therapist, and this is not a psychiatrist ward. This is the Donkey Kong Jungle Climber playthrough. And as you can see, we just landed the final blow. So, sayonara, Kremlin. We've got another Crystal Banana back. But yeah, as you can see, I didn't exactly do well throughout the level. Oh well. On to the next cutscene, which I kind of like, because it sets up the next world pretty well. Dun, dun, dun! That's right. A spaceship has appeared out of nowhere. It is in fact, as Karu will now say, the King Cruiser 4. Now I know what you're thinking. What happened to King Cruisers 1, 2 and 3? Well, it's funny that you should ask, because it is actually, although it seems like a pointless name, it's actually a good bit of referencing, because think about it. The first King Cruiser is the Flying Croc, you know, that ship right at the end, end of um, Donkey Kong Country 2, which was also the setting of the final boss fight, well, one of the final boss fights anyway. The second one is that um, flying ship that Karul was in in um, Donkey Kong 64. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't remember it, it was only around for a few seconds. And King of Swing saw the final battle take place on the um, King Cruiser 3, so... Yeah, it is actually a pretty solid reference, which I kind of like Payon for doing, because unlike uh, EAD Tokyo and Nintendo, who just don't seem to be interested in carrying on their continuity, Payon like to um, reference the um, old Rareware get names and incorporate them, as well as throwing new ideas, which I actually kind of like. Anyways, enough of my blabbering, as Diddy said a few text boxes back, the only way to catch up with the King Cruiser 4 is to climb up High High Mountain. So join me next time, where we, well, climb the mountain. See ya!